Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Selamat siang, Bapak Ibu, para tamu undangan yang terhormat. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, salam kebajikan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to East Venture Summit 2022 right here at Ayana Resort and Spa Bali. Thank you, everyone. I am Siska Becker. I have the utmost privilege of being your MC for the whole duration of the event. And first, let me express my gratitude for this amazing opportunity to share this beautiful day in Bali with all of you, all in good and healthy condition, as we are about to sink our energy for a productive day ahead. Now, let's talk about the background for East Venture Summit 2022. Our topic is Navigating Crisis, Balancing Innovation and Resilience. That will be our major topic of discussion throughout the day. And the reason is, of course, quite clear. We have been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic for almost three years now. We all have felt it one way or another. And it has led to numerous issues from energy, financial, and food problems They all have struck the world hard after the global health crisis. Moreover, the economic downturn that has been a problem for the last three years also has spilled over into other problems. But through today's event, you all will learn that East Venture believes that crises can actually occur anytime. So to handle the crisis problems caused by the pandemic is one of East Venture's main focus right now. You will also learn that East Ventures, with its ecosystem, can navigate and will overcome the crisis through balancing between innovations and resiliences. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that you all can sense the urgency of our collective mission through collaborative effort to rebuild Indonesia, to get it back on its feet stronger and better. Ladies and gentlemen, to formally commence the event, We invite you to please stand for the national anthem Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Attendees of East Venture Summit 2022, let's begin the afternoon session of our event, East Venture Summit 2022, an annual event hosted by East Ventures that aims to become a platform to connect, to share knowledge, to encourage discussion, and to build partnerships among East Ventures ecosystem, including limited partners, founders, government, 
and East Ventures team. Now, this event will include a variety of activities, from keynote speeches from figures of various backgrounds and fields of expertise, who will provide us with valuable insights. Aside from the keynote speech and panel discussion, there will also be a Pitching by the Sea session and an evening gala dinner. We look forward to having you later in that event, later in the day. And now we'll begin the afternoon session with our first panel discussion titled The Rise of Creator Economy. The presence of online video platforms is currently expanding and driving the expansion of the digital economy. Even the creator economy platform is expected to be the top of the digital economy. IDN Media and TipTip are the founders of the digital platform startup that will share what strategies we'll be implementing to revitalize the creator economy. Now for this session, I'd like to invite Mr. Yoshi, VP of Investment of East Ventures, to conduct the session. We also like to invite the speakers, Mr. William Utomo, co-founder and COO of IDN Media, and Mr. Albert Lucius from TipTip to talk about the rise of creator economy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for the uh, East Ventures Summit. We, I cannot emphasize how much we're excited to see you in person and meet you all in Bali in one place. So today we have uh, William from IDN Media and then Albert from TipTip. So to kick off the panel discussion today, we'd like to start with an introduction by each of the founders about their, themselves and their company. I'll pass it to you, to William. Yes, thank you, Yoshi. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is in good health. And it's very exciting uh, to be here today. I heard there are a lot of LPs coming from Brunei, South Africa, German, Japan, Singapore, and all around the world. And thank you, EV, for hosting such a great summit. My name is William Utomo. I am the co-founder of IDN Media. Uh, my co-founder, Winston, is also here with me, who happens to be my brother. And IDN Media is a multi-platform media company with about 80 million monthly active user. And since day one, uh, since we started eight years ago, the goal has always been to democratize access to information. So our team size is about 650 people. And we are fortunate that for the past four years, we have been a profitable company. Um, <laughs> So about two months ago, we raised our Series D round. So we onboarded uh, new investors, Pandu from KMIF. We gratefully participated too, of yep. course. EVG, of course, our best and longest supporter. Well said. Uh, since what, five, six years ago? And we onboarded Densu, Yuki-san. Yeah. So yeah, so that is us in a nutshell. And for today's topic, one of our businesses is called ICE, yes. Indonesia and Creators. And ICE stands for? It stands for Indonesia Creators Economy. So essentially what we do is we connect advertisers to content creators. Okay. So we started the business about four years ago, and last year we are fortunate that we had the opportunity to create a joint venture with Goto. So we spin it off out of Idea Media, create a joint venture with Goto. And to give size of the contact, to give context of the size, we have about 8,000 content creators inside the platform. And last year in 2021, we facilitated about 13 transactions, 13,000 transactions, right. buying over more than 3,000 content creators. Very exciting. Yeah, there's a lot to ask about in, in the panel, for sure. Uh, I'd like to turn to Albert from sure. TikTok. To make well, thank you so much for the time and opportunity. Thank you, and Wilson and the EV team here for hosting this large grandeur event today. It's been a while since we saw a lot of people together for this kind of conference post the pandemic. So really thank you for the opportunity. Um, so hi everyone, my name is uh, Albert Lucius. Uh, I used to uh, be partner with, with Wilson back then. And in 2014, we, uh, you know, we, I started this company called Kudo. At that time, I was lucky enough to meet Wilson uh, in Bay Area, San Francisco at that time. So I was still in the, in the US met Wilson, offered a tea chat, you know, maybe five, 10 minutes at a bar, 
10 p.m. in the evening, we settled together, and since then, uh, the rest is the history. We've been a partner since then. So now, um, I back the, uh, in in October 2021, which is uh, which was last year, I started this new company called uh, Tip Tip. We are basically a, a platform for content creators to monetize. So I've been um, uh, st I, we started this company right in the in the midst of a pandemic. And, and, and we've been riding the, the wave of the, the growth of digital ecosystem since then. Um, what separates us from, from uh, many other typical content creators or social media websites out there is the way we execute. We are very creator-centric, and uh, we're all about communities, grassroots movements, and enabling and empower them to, 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 to monetize from day one. And um, we we do this by offering them opportunity to sell tickets, to sell content, to sell premium content, or to endorse a product without the need of first building audience from day one, which is why uh, we're slightly different than, than many other uh, media and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, social competing uh, uh, companies out there. Um, right now, the team size is about 100. We are based in Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia at the moment. We just launched uh, the business last week. Uh, in Indonesia, so we are now open for, for public. Uh, uh, since then, we are about a thousand creators or so, so we just launched uh, last week. And uh, we're looking to ride uh, the growth of uh, Indonesia's uh, creative economy uh, uh, together, uh, hopefully with, with IDN Media and, and, and many other uh, startups out there who are all together building the Indonesia creative economy. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for the intro. Um, so when we look at creative economy, right, uh, globally speaking, the market size is more than 100 billion. And when we look at Southeast Asia, there's more than 380 million people who are consuming social media contents two to four hours every day, right? So there's clearly a big opportunity here and big reason why you guys are in that space. So the first question um, I'd like to ask you guys is how you are seeing this market opportunity, especially given pandemic and how the macro environment is changing. And based off of your experience, right, You've been in the digital media space and having started the creator economy platform four years ago, um, I'm sure there's a lot to learn from you. And so, yeah, the first question is to William, how do you, can you share your perspective and how you're seeing the market within the creator economy? Yes, I think the industry is future-proof, right? ICE grew during the two years of pandemic. Post-pandemic, it continues to grow. Uh, essentially, the growth of a content creator marketplace grew in line with the adoption of social media or media consumption. Right. So where there is attention and people's eyeballs, then the advertising money and marketing budget will follow. Right. So I think the growth is in line. Right, all right. And um, to you, Albert, uh, right, um, you've successfully built Crudo, right, and then you sold it to Grab for one of the largest acquisitions back then. And then after that, you joined Grab as a director and helped the business scale the business even further. And you could have decided as a second startup, as a serial entrepreneur, to start any businesses, but you picked this one, right? So can you share how you're seeing this space? I'm sure you saw a great opportunity here. Yeah, um, so we know Indonesia is one of the largest uh, growing economy in terms of population and in terms of the rising uh, GDP. Uh, when we look at Indonesia as a country, you know, close to 300 million people, a lot of them are actually, um, you know, grassroots, which was related to my first business at Kudo. At Kudo back then, we were trying to build a network of agents that help uh, the population to access the digital content, essentially, the digital world, selling goods um, throughout Indonesia. Uh, this business that I'm doing right now is essentially a modified, accelerated version of that. It's all about managing a network of people except this time I'm managing content creators, right. right? And why we pick this business is because we believe there are a lot of great talents across Indonesia that are good at many things. For example, the, house, uh, the, the, the housewife in some area across, uh, you know, uh, uh, one, one, uh, one suburban, for example, right? The people around that area knows about, about this mom who is good at cooking, right. Everybody follows her, and then there's a normally WhatsApp group or, or, or Instagram uh, area that people follow. But these type of talents are not 
necessarily ready for the social media currently as it is. As you know, it's very, very difficult and painful to, to build presence, to build followership, audience, right? To have someone like, uh, like Iman out there, for example, with hundreds and thousands of followers is very difficult. It takes uh, some sort of skill set and, and, and consistency, right? But um, a lot of the, the moms, the dads out there, they just have 1,000 Instagram followers, but they are very good talent. They are good cook, good musicians. That is why I picked this platform and then I picked this area because I believe the growth of the country is there, it's rising. But right now, all the, the existing majority of the media is not suited for, for, uh, for them to monetize. All right, thanks so much. And, and just wanted to do a deeper dive into how you are serving these uh, you know, influencers and content creators. What do you see as, you know, having started the service and launched it just a couple months ago recently as well, um, can you share you know, what you have learned so far? Any changes in, from the conception any, um, to where you are today? So we'll, we did a soft launch back in, in April, and what we learned is, is this one thing which is what also surprised me. Uh, in a platform like us, it doesn't matter whether you have 5,000 followers or 500,000 followers. It almost means nothing. Our model is agnostic of the numbers of audience you follow because our model only cares about the super fans, the, 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 the people who actually believes in the content creators and supports the content creators. Uh, coming back to an example of the, uh, the, the house mom who, who is doing cooking for the surrounding, right? If such house mom posts a recipe of uh, how to cook nasi goreng, for example, at YouTube. This person will, will go nowhere because unless you're building your presence, advertise about yourself, it's very, very painful to, to, to build that audience, right? So, um, so what we learn is that for those uh, type of creators, talents, who do content the way Tip Tip monetizes, it doesn't matter how much, how many your, your, uh, your followership is, as long as you have a core set of supporters who are following you, and then they, they send the appreciation directly to the creators without the needing of audience, algorithm, and things like that. Right. Okay, thank you. And then I'd like to turn to William, right? Because you also mentioned you have an uh, exclusive partnership with GoTo on the ICE, the uh, Indonesia creator economy. And that's not an easy thing to pull it off. And so I want to ask you more questions around that. Like, why do you think they picked you? You know, they could have done it themselves but they decided to work with you. How are you working with them? Yep. Um, so for the past four years, we have been serving most of the Fortune 500 companies in Indonesia. And most I think, of them? Yep. Wow. I think the idea with GoTo is they have millions of merchants, and of course, on the Gojek side, they have uh, another million of uh, merchants as well, and sellers. Um, they want to offer uh, access to influencers, to content creators. So what we essentially do is, with our ICE platform, we, int we will integrate inside the Tokopedia seller platform and the GoBiz merchant app. Um, so these millions of merchants now can afford and can buy content creators facilitated by us. Right. So that is the idea of serving the small and medium enterprises, which is currently underserved. Right. 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 And, and have, has that, have you already launched that service? It will be up in September. September. Yep. Okay, we really look forward to that. Okay, there's a lot of opportunity. And also wanted to um, ask you more um, with the live streaming business too, right? You have the ICE, which you started four years ago, and now seeing a lot of opportunity in this space, you've launched uh, the ID and live streaming. Can you talk a little more about that and then share it with the audience on that product? Yes. Um, so we at the IDN app, we have an entertainment live stream function. Um, so it's essentially like Twitch or like TikTok live. So it's an entertainment live stream platform where we allow genuine interaction to be made, authentic relationship to be formed. So mostly on the entertainment side, and then the fans can give virtual gifts to the streamers, uh, the fans can subscribe to the specific streamers, and of course the end goal would be to become a commerce live stream. When did you launch this? Uh, January. January, this year. okay, so it's been like six months. Correct. Okay, all right, and, and how are you seeing the adoption and like, I'm sure there, I have to say it, right, like there are competitors, you know, in, in that space as well, like GoPlay and the others. How are you seeing the, the play within the ecosystem right now, yep. having launched it six months ago? It is by far the fastest growing uh, product inside IDN but what we really like the most is our thesis is 
we look at media consumption based on the content format, based on the period. So 2007, uh, it was the text-based content platform. That's why Twitter uh, was adopted. Fast forward to 2012, it was image-based, which is why Instagram got popular. 2014, it was video-based, which is YouTube. 2019, it was short-form video, which was TikTok. The question is, what comes next after short-form video? And our hypothesis is live streaming, which is why uh, now, for the next two years, we will still ride the wave of a short-form video, but what comes next after short-form video, we strongly believe that it is live stream. Okay. No, thank, thanks so much for, for that. And actually, as an extension, right, um, compared to the other players, you've built over eight years, you mentioned um, you work with most of the Fortune 500 companies, and that's how you are helping uh, them to monetize even further, working on the ICE side of the business too. But how is like eight years of building the business partnerships across different business lines, how are they helping you with the live streaming service? Yeah, I think we're very fortunate like, right, that we work with a lot of stakeholders. On the demand side, they will be advertisers. Uh, on the supply side, it will be content creators. And that, of course, content creators, we have lots of categories. It can be writers, it can be comic creator, it can be streamers, it can be Instagrammers, TikTokers, etc. So I think uh, utilizing the infrastructure and the network that we have built for the past eight years, it makes our job easier uh, to launch this um, entertainment live stream platform inside our content super app. Okay, thank you. And then we, we have a few minutes left. Um, I would like to turn back to Albert, right? What you've launched the service and you've built successful businesses as, as your entrepreneur career. Like, how are you seeing the, the milestones and the target going forward, you know, having launched it recently? So I think um, the way we're gonna execute, I think it's gonna be hyper-local, community-based. So we will determine different communities that we go into and then develop what we call the density, which is a high usage, high referral, people are referring others. So that'll be a milestone for us. So the way we will write, uh, build this business will be very similar to how I was doing Kudo back then. We go from community to community, hyper-local, and we build uh, usage, and then, then we go from there. Right. Similar to how early days of uh, Facebook, so to say. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, um, with, with that, like, I'd like to uh, ask you, each of you, right? We have a few minutes left, but maybe like a closing remarks or anything that you'd like to share with the audience. We have more than 60 investors and hundreds of founders, right, from back to back. Um, maybe William, you wanna, wanna take the lead and then after that with Albert. As a senior, I think I would let Albert <laughs> do it first. It's called passing the mic, yeah. Now I cannot pass back. Uh, I think for, for me, um, riding on the team of, of today's conference, I think COVID has changed the behavior of, of, of uh, many people. And I think we are in this space together uh, uh, with William as well, because I believe that trend is rising very, very good. And then people are more familiar behind the camera these days, far more than, than back then pre-COVID. Yeah. So like someone like my mother, for example, right now doing Arisan online, which is like an online meet and gather with their friends with video on, this wouldn't have happened before before COVID, so COVID accelerates that. And um, here at TipTip, our only hope is we continue to grow to help people be able to earn income, no matter how, how, how big or how small they are. And then as long as you have good talent and you can monet, then we offer them a platform to monetize whatever they're, they're doing and then share the happiness around with the community. So. Um, you know, the next few years is going to be very, very important. But I do believe that in Indonesia um, and, and many other emerging markets across Southeast Asia, content creators are going to be the next big thing in the next few years. And I hope that we can ride this wave together as the company grows. I think for us, since we started eight years ago, the goal has always been to democratize access to information. And our role at IDN Media is to build the tools, to build the infrastructure, to build the platform because one of our life goal is to actually see Indonesia becoming a high-income country. Um, now, GDP per capita is about 4,000. To be high-income country, you need to be 12,000. 
and we only have time until 2045, which is, if you think about it, it's not that far, 20 years from now. If we miss that gap, then we will miss it forever. So I think our role in reaching that goal is to build the content platform infrastructure. And we really hope that uh, we can make that dream come true for the nation. And of course, we would love to invite everyone in this room who wants to be a streamer. Uh, please feel free to stream yourself at IDN app. Who knows that you might be the next Rafi Ahmad or Nagita Slavina. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Um, more convinced about how big and large the opportunity is in, in this space. And so with that, I'd like to close this uh, panel session. And uh, I'd like to ask the audience for a round of applause for our esteemed panelists. William and Oliver, thank you so much. And I think I'll pass the... Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Yoshi, for moderating the discussion. And thank you to our speakers for sharing with us your strategies that you will be implementing to revitalize the industry. And now we move on to the next section of the panel discussion, the awarding of the token of appreciation. For our speakers in this event, we have prepared tokens that are very unique and very personalized. Each speaker will get a live caricature drawing. We say it's live because the drawings are done while the speakers were talking during the panel discussion. There you go. Hope you like this token of appreciation and keep it as a commemoration of your role here as a speaker at the East Ventures Summit 2022. And now to Albert Lucius, founder and group CEO of TipTip. Tip. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. And now let's take a group photo all together with your live caricature. For the next speakers, maybe I can warn you since you're also going to be getting this live caricature. When you're doing the talking in your panel discussions, make sure you give your best angles forward so the artist can get the best features when they present to you your live caricatures. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You may return to your seats, join the other attendees, and enjoy the rest of the event.